I cannot believe I haven't done a favorites video in a while, but it is time you guys, especially before we get into like back to back to back launches and fall sales and the holidays. So this is going to be favorites video about some favorites of mine for, you know, about the past month, but definitely some products have been loving on for longer. I just want to jump right in and get into a product that I am just really was not expecting to love as much as I have been loving it. This is, I think I've used it about three times now and I'm just very, very impressed. So this is the Merit Great Skin Instant Glow Serum. So first of all, this is about the most luxurious Merit packaging that I've experienced yet. It is a glass frosted bottle, absolutely beautiful, and it is a biphase serum product. So it's essentially like an emulsion, except it's more of an essence texture. So this, to me, um, just as a jumping off point, reminds me of the Glossier future do except it will work for more skin types if you've been following my channel for a long time i've loved future do for a really long time it's one of those um, emulsion serum products that really gives you a long lasting glow and it works really well with a lot of different foundations especially if you just find that some foundations just look a little bit too dry in some areas Prepping with that product will get you a better look overall, especially if you have dry skin. But Merit is kind of doing something a little bit different. Future Dew is advertised as kind of this mix between a makeup prep product as well as a product to actually give you skincare results. And I feel like this is kind of doing the same thing, though I would say that Merit is probably sticking more closely towards this being a skincare item. It does have hyaluronic acid, 2% niacinamide, um, propendiol, cow seed extract, I believe. But essentially what I see this is as a very lightweight, slightly nourishing essence that gives you a long lasting glow because I do get a little bit of that dry oil look to my skin. I'm actually wearing it under the NARS light reflecting foundation. And I have just been finding my skin is a little bit more dry than usual. And this is just really, really doing it for me. It really adds this plump, hydrated look and it is beautiful under makeup. Would love to do a video, and I've talked about this before, on kind of the intersection between skincare and makeup and the products that brands are coming out with now that kind of are trying to get in between those categories. You know, those kind of cosmeceuticals and there's a lot to all of that. I think it would be really fun to kind of dive into it with you guys if you're interested. But I think that this launch for Merit as far as their first skincare item, it makes sense for me coming from a makeup brand because it works so beautifully under makeup. So take with that what you will. I don't think that that is a coincidence. However, I do think that this is absolutely beautiful as a prep product. And they do recommend putting it on under moisturizer before SPF. I think you could also use this as a mix-in product and it would look really beautiful. So yes, I am very, very impressed with this product, especially um, on makeup days. I actually do have a video coming very soon on how I get a really smooth base for my makeup. So be on the lookout for that video. Make sure that your notifications are on so you don't miss it. I do have another kind of skincare product I wanna talk about in a second, but I wanna go ahead into a product that I can finally like wholeheartedly say I really love. And it is the Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. This is my favorite mascara, I think, of the year. It is such a buildable, lifted, flirty lash look. It really lifts those lashes up and gives you that individual lash look. You can definitely build and build and it does slowly build. So I find that it is a product that I can really control well. It has a banana shaped applicator. So I just find it's extra great at getting that lift, getting under the lashes and pushing them up. If you love a natural everyday lash look, that individual flirty butterfly looking lash, this is absolutely a product I could recommend. And by the way, I thought, I misinterpreted, I thought that this was a tubing mascara. It's actually not. Because to me, it wears very similarly to 
into a tubing mascara just because it just, it lasts, you know, it does not crumble, it does not smudge. So I just find that all around, you know, I am personally a fan of affordable mascaras, that's what I typically buy, but I will 100% be repurchasing this. I know that it is finally back in stock, so I'll leave a link down to it below, but yeah, this, this is a good one. I feel like it frames the eyes so beautifully. And speaking of the eyes, we have a product that I did recently talk about um, and I just absolutely love it. And they are the Hypnotizing Pop Shots from Charlotte Tilbury. Now, I did do an entire kind of first impressions video on these, so I'm not going to stay here for too long, but I kind of wanted to wrap up and give you some final thoughts on this formula for me personally, and this seemed to be a little bit of a debate on the video I saw in the comments. I don't think it's a debate that these are an expensive product. 100% they are an expensive product. But you know, the kind of existential question of whether or not these are worth the money, I think is just really, is really going to vary person to person. And I want you guys to feel empowered to make that decision for yourself. Because ultimately, though I love sharing with you guys my opinions on makeup and trying makeup and trying to be as informative as possible, all of that is geared so that you guys can feel empowered to make your own decisions and feel empowered to make the right purchasing decisions for you. For me, I will say that these two specific hypnotic pop shots for me are absolutely worth it and I have been just absolutely enamored. Number one is Smoky Quartz and this will 100% be a shadow that you guys are gonna be hearing a lot about because I just cannot get over the look. It is the most gorgeous taupey brown with an elegant wet finish. Those little sparkles in there sit so closely on the skin that you're really able to build it up and get that wet glossy look while you know still working with a powder one and done eyeshadow. I think that this is certainly for me a perfect one and done eyeshadow shade. But I have been seeing comments asking for some shade comparisons, specifically to some products that I already have and love. So I wanna quickly give that to you guys. Okay, the main question I was seeing over and over is how similar is it to Dior Beige Mitza? It is similar, but you're gonna see just based on the swatch that they're uh, not the same color. So. That is Dior Beige Mitza down here. It is way more, it pulls way more silver. Um, and it is not like a wet looking eyeshadow. It is beautiful and metallic and it is one of my favorite eyeshadows, period, as far as metallics go. But you can see in that reflection that the sparkles within smoky quartz are very fine, so they kind of create that wet look, whereas Beige Mitza creates a little bit more of a taupey, metallic look. And also, you can see here that Beige Mitza is a bit, is a bit more beigey because um, the metallic base just leans a little bit more on the beige side. So, however, Lithium from the Moondust line is quite similar but you will see that it is not the same. There is Lithium from the Moondust line. I think that it is way closer to the Hypnotic Pop Shot than Beige Mitza, but you can see that it is just not the same tone. There's way more red to Smoky Mauve and more yellow to Lithium. However, I mean, you're getting a good taste right now, hopefully, of my kind of shadow. This is my kind of tone. I really like these tones. And there is also Oyster Pearl from Charlotte Tilbury, just to kind of give you a baseline. And I'll put that right on top, or above, I mean, Smoky Quartz. So that is Oyster Pearl right there. Looks kind of strange on my knuckles. It has more warmth to it. Um, than a smoky quartz does. And you know, color is very subjective, especially when you keep swatching colors next to colors, you start to kind of pick up the undertones more. And I'm seeing more purple pink to smoky mauve than I am seeing in these other colors that we're talking about. All of these are like my favorite. I, I mean, I love them a lot. 
but I will say that I don't have anything quite exactly like smoky quartz. And it's one of those things, do I need all of these? Absolutely not. But I feel like I definitely have that weakness and this is my weakness. This is my makeup weakness. Uh, let me know down below what makeup category and like what color story do you, do you find yourself like always going back to? And then you're like, oh wait, I'm having, you know, a lot of colors that are very, you know, slight variations between them, but, but you always end up going back to that. I would love to hear which one that is for you guys, but Today I did use Smoky Quartz on the lids as a base and then I went in on the outer corners with Emerald Eyes. And Emerald Eyes, the other color out of the four that I have that I would say for me um, is a standout. I actually don't think that Diamond Eyes and Rose Gold are going to be long-term favorites for me. Are they pretty? Yes. But these for me are the two shades that just have captured me. Emerald Eyes layered on top of other shadows just manages to work itself in. Like to so many looks, I just find myself being like, oh, that needs a little emerald eyes. But it just adds that touch of green. It kind of creates a different dimension and a very subtle pop of color. These two together, um, I just, I love this look. I love this eye look so much. There's certainly two eyeshadows that I love very dearly. I do have one more eyeshadow that is on my eyes and it is from About Face. And this is the Fluid eye paint it is matte it is the shade smell before rain and I just think that this is going to be my new staple eyeshadow I use to prep all of my eyeshadow looks and if you have not heard this little spiel before I'll try and keep it short but but my preference as far as prepping the eyes for a long lasting eyeshadow look, especially with creams, I like to use a matte shadow that is more of a kind of basic crease shade a matte shadow that is really going to lock everything in rather than going in with an eye base. And I like to do this because I don't have to necessarily use it all over the eyes. You certainly can, but it's nice because I can just kind of take it right in the areas where I would typically crease, use it as like a transition, and then it just makes everything last longer. Not only that, but I just love this shade for me as that perfect crease shade. The formula is uber smooth, pigmented, but not difficult to work with. This shade in particular, I just know I'm going to be reaching for every day. And is it like the most sexy product? No, but is this going to be, I think, a staple product that I consistently revisit and go back to? Yes, and I think that those products deserve more recognition. And I think that About Face in general is doing something really interesting with their formulas. I'm really excited to keep diving into the brand because honestly, I definitely think that they have legs and I'm really excited to see um, upcoming launches from them. Shall we take a little fragrance break? This is actually a travel, like a little mini of Dead Cool Milk. Um, this is one of those fragrances if you are a fan of Fleur, Missing Person, if you like Glossier U, if you like a white musk kind of scent. You know, Juliet has a gun, those fragrances that are very musky and skin-like. This is one that you need to be on the lookout for if you haven't tried it yet. It's just one of those fragrances that gives you that close skin, cuddly kind of smell. A little bit of laundry, but not like a very abrasive, a fresh laundry smell. Such a perfect layering fragrance. And that is what I first noticed about this in particular. I think that layering fragrances, you know, something very skin-like like this, and then layering another fragrance that gives you a little bit of pop, maybe a little bit of extra sweetness or sharpness, whatever the case may be, whatever the fragrance vibe you're going for, I just feel like this is going to get so much use for so many different people. So it's white musk in here, bergamot and amber. So very warm and comforting. Um, really perfect for all year round, but you know, especially in the fall, I find that this is such a perfect kind of everyday fragrance. It's very, very good. And I'm really happy to see that they're now uh, selling at Sephora so that I can uh, pick up another one because you can see that this is uh, not going to last me much longer. Okay, so I actually have a few favorites that Khaki 
found with me or helped me find when I visited her. So I wanna go through those. Round of applause, Khaki, because I feel like, you know, we were together for such a short amount of time, but like, you definitely made your mark. So first of all, the gloss, the lip combo that is on my lips right now. So this is from NARS. It's their Afterglow Lip Shine in the shade Nympho. Perfect, cool toned gloss. It is actually more of a liquid, for me it's a liquid lip balm formula, kind of mixed with a lip oil, or like a very thin gloss. Um, I typically love a water droplet effect gloss on my lips, but I was very impressed and have been consistently impressed with how my lips just look healthier with this on. And it's not necessarily about anything other than that. It's just a very flattering product. It sinks into the lips, it hydrates them, it doesn't leave you with a tacky, weird residue. They're so comfortable and they really do a good job, especially if you do have or you're more prone to dry lips like I am. The colors are like so elegant. Nympho is, again, the perfect uh, cool toned gloss. That cooler uh, brown pink, it's, it's perfect. But I also picked up the shade Aragon, which, uh, for a fall gloss, like look at this aloud a little bit. Look at that. Oh my God. It's perfect. It really, it, it it's just perfect. A really, really luxurious gloss formula. I cannot wait to keep using these because they're just freaking great. And then to line the lips, I used khaki liner which I hadn't used her liner in a while, but but you know what? I am a fan and obviously Kaki and I are friends. So take with that what you will, if I guess there's like some sort of bias there, uh, but I don't know what to tell you guys. This is just damn good. It's a perfect uh, cooler contour shade for the lips and it also is super creamy. So if you like a more creamy liner, this is definitely a good one to check out. I like to actually kind of fill in my lips a little bit with this one. That's what I did today. And it also really just goes with everything. If you just wanna add a little bit of that contour, that depth to any lip look, it this will give it to you. So I think it's also super versatile. And lastly, she introduced me to the MAC, the MAC Fix Plus Magic Radiance. Okay, let me give you guys a demo of this. It is very radiant. And if you just find that your makeup is looking dry, if your skin is feeling dry, this will immediately impart that beautiful radiance to your skin without it being like a super uh, like oily kind of makeup uh, refresher. I mean, look at that glow. It just, it really gets you there fast. It's beautiful under makeup as like a prep product as you continue on with your routine. I find that it's really beautiful too to just rehydrate. Dry skin folks will absolutely, absolutely love this. If you have more oily skin, I would personally uh, steer clear of this. But I just feel like so prepped for winter because with the Merit Great Skin Glow Serum and this you no know, refreshing spray, I feel like I'm just like, I'm ready. You know, um, my makeup is going to be nice and hydrated. So I feel really good about those two products. Okay, two more favorites. I wanted to mention um, a product that I've just been using a lot and it's the Makeup by Mario Crystal Reflector. I've been doing like a winged liner, just a little bit of this on the lids and it's such an easy look. I mean, it's no secret that I love a wet looking eyeshadow, but trying out one of these, whether it's the Crystal Reflector or the one from Stila or the Fenty Diamond Bomb. I'll leave all of these products I'm talking about linked down below, but you know, no matter what one you pick, I feel like a lot of them are pretty much the same. It's just so nice to have this kind of wet looking topper to add to any look just on top of liner, you know, a matte shadow and then add this on top. It just adds such a gorgeous wet dimension to so many different looks. And it's just easy, it's very dependable. And that's why I've been kind of going back to this kind of Vixen winged out smoky black liner and then just tapping this on the lid and then calling it a day. It's really been nice, especially, you know, during spooky season. Like I feel like, you know, I have no idea what I'm doing for Halloween, but I feel like that's the makeup look I'm gonna do and I'm definitely gonna be using this with it. And lastly, just, uh, I have to mention this again, but it's the Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel from Isentree SPF 50. 
you guys, this is still like my favorite sunscreen. I use it every single day. And I wanted to mention this because I feel like in the fall, like this fall has just been very busy for me. And there are certain situations where it's just so much easier to be like, oh, you know, I'm not gonna add sunscreen. But I've been really good about not doing that. And I think what makes you ready to not skip sunscreen is having one that you really love and that is so fuss free and just easy to work with. And that is when this product comes into play. It's just, it's a favorite, the white cast on me. It's so easy to work with, blends in like a dream and just one of those dependable sunscreens that doesn't leave your skin really greasy. It just kind of sinks in such a perfect sunscreen. I just love it. And that, my friends, are all of my recent favorites. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. And let me know what makeup favorites you guys have been loving over the past couple of months. I would love to try some of them out. Thank you guys as always so much, and I will see you in my next one.